quasi here. This is a picture of the first mirror that was ever made, 8,000 years ago, out of polished obsidian that was found in modern day Turkey. Now what's interesting about mirrors are their symmetry and their ability to perfectly reflect the image that is being presented to them. So we can deduce that there are basically two sides to a mirror, the image side and the reflection side. The reflection is influenced by the image. The mirror never smiles before you do. Now this is just a mirror of literal physical reality. What if there was a similar mirror of our internal world that creates the external world that we are experiencing? My life changed eight years ago when I had this revelation. Essentially, what I realized was this, the external world that we experience is but a reflection of the internal world, which is the image that's being reflected. This is what's known as the mirror principle, and it has four strange laws that once mastered will allow you to create the very reality that you dream of. Look, I know this sounds kind of cringy, but I'm not even exaggerating when I say this. Here's why. Over the last eight years, I went from being in a miserable corporate job that I was destined to, feeling trapped and life was bleak, struggling to start and grow my business, steeped in doubt every single day, to growing that business, to not just six figures to replace my job, but to seven figures, making over a million every single year, with the amount of money that made my life a continual vacation. And I get to do what I love every single day. I'm married to the woman of my dreams, bought two houses, and now I have a beautiful son. Life is beyond, literally beyond what I could have imagined in the time period that I could have imagined it in, all because of the mirror principle. Many misunderstand this and it took me a while to crack it. So in today's video, I want to reveal to you the four main laws to the mirror principle and a protocol to apply it. My goal with this video is to leave no stone unturned. In fact, I actually made a comprehensive guide that will summarize everything for you along with the 90 day protocol for application. Please watch this video carefully and commit to this 90 day process. Let's get started. I'd like to begin this video with actual examples, real life examples of people who have applied this and have actually achieved real life results. Because as you know, unfortunately in this space, there's a lot of people who claim a lot of different things, but they can never really prove it. So they're not really walking the talk. They're just talking the talk. Everything that I share is from my personal experience and what I've been able to accomplish. I don't say it to brag. Obviously, I'm not trying to show off anything. Um, it's just more so giving you proof that you can achieve it too if you double down, commit to this process for a certain period of time. Which brings me to one of my clients, William. So William joined us, I believe, towards the end of 2021. He's a trader, but also has a coaching business where he teaches people how to trade. And he was struggling with this toxic pattern of going through weekend benders of binge drinking, which led him to procrastinating and self-sabotaging in his trading, in his coaching business as well. He couldn't quite get the kind of results that he wanted and he was stuck at around 140,000 a month, which for plenty of you, I know that sounds like a lot of money, but uh, stuck is stuck. So we have a lot of high performer clients, but he was stuck at 140,000 and he couldn't move the needle forward. And he realized that it was an internal problem, not an external one, because he had all the tactics and strategies to, to scale up, but it was really just a, a lack of being able to apply himself to do it because there was no consistency. So fast forward to 2022, a few months later, he actually had a record month with us. He went from 140K to 170, K a month to his first ever $364,000 a month, which was more than doubling when he joined us. And for the first time tracking 1 million a quarter. A few weeks ago, he actually messaged me. This is in 2024. I never thanked you for this, but the program changed the game for me. In fact, I rarely speak about this, but I feel like I've been able to fully manifest about four, five of my biggest dreams thanks to the program and exercises. Winning the $10 million award from ClickFunnels, ex exiting my company to a private equity firm for millions, starting and growing my YouTube from zero to 54,000 subs in six months, growing the new coaching business to 365K cash collected a month in six months and so on. This just goes to show that this works. William attributes his success to following the mirror principle, but not just following it for a few days, but continually committing to it. And when you do that for a certain period of time, that's what we're seeing. Most of our clients see phenomenal changes in their lives in six months to a year's time. Once they continually consistently keep applying these principles, they just keep growing and growing and growing. It just becomes the new state of being. So my goal has always been to share stuff with you that'll get you permanent results, not to manifest a fucking lottery win. You know, I'm not interested in helping you get a temporary win that's not gonna change your life because anyone can get a quick win who can sustain it. 
And as the old adage goes, it's not about how much money you make, it's how much you get to keep. My interest is to teach you sustainable strategies so you can continually maintain a life that you are proud of, brings you fulfillment and freedom because that's what I've been able to do. The mirror principle, I believe, will allow you to do just that. So let's get started with the four principles of the mirror. How I'd like to structure this video, if you don't mind, is I wanna share the four principles with you, explain them to you, and then give you a four step method to implement, a protocol to implement this. And as I mentioned to you, there will be a guide available that will summarize everything that I'm speaking about. It will probably be in the description and pinned in the pinned comments. Just to support you further along this journey, I really want you to commit to this with me. So the very first principle of the mirror is the mirror reflects your attitude towards it. What does that mean? What is attitude? It's like Viktor Frankl said, the last of freedoms can be taken from a man except his attitude. That can never be taken. And he said this while he was in a Nazi prison camp. He still maintained his attitude despite all the torture he was subjected to. So what does attitude mean? Attitude is simply a thought feeling unit. When I think about something and I feel something towards it, I form an attitude. If I think about my house and all the wealth that I have and I feel happy about it, I have formed an attitude towards my house, my wealth. Which brings me to the second principle of the mirror, which is that the mirror reflects the content of your attitude, not context. So for example, if you hate something, the mirror will reflect that something. If you love something, the mirror will reflect that something. The mirror doesn't care about the context of your attitude. It cares about the content of it. So we get more an abundance of what we hate and what we love. If I hate my job and I hate bills, then the things that I hate in my job will start to show up more and more and it will start to irritate me more and more. And I hate paying bills and getting unexpected bills that uh, I don't like paying and I hate unexpected situations that occur that take me away from the goals that I want to hit in my business, the more I hate that thing, the more that thing keeps happening. So that's what you have to remember. The mirror doesn't care about the context of the attitude. It cares about the content. Now you might be asking, well, Quasi, if I hate money, doesn't that mean I'll get more money? If you can sincerely hate money, you'll probably be showered in abundance. You can't sincerely hate money. So I believe if you sincerely hate something, you'll get it in abundance. Which brings me to the third principle, and this is where people really get tripped up. It's simply that this mirror of reality operates with a delay. The reflection is formed with a delay because of the inert quality of matter. If I have formed an attitude and I have chosen the content of my attitude, I have to wait a certain period of time before the mirror reflects it into physical reality. So when I form the image with my internal attitude and I say, I love growing on YouTube and I love serving people and money continually flows into my life, I'm incredibly grateful for it. If I feel that way today, I have to hold it for a certain period of time until I make the goal that I want to make. So if I want to make $20,000 a month or $30,000 a month and I hold this attitude for long enough, it will manifest. There is no choice. The time delay between me conjuring up the image and the manifestation of my reflection is dependent on the complexity of the goal. Think about that for a second. If my goal is really, really complex, AKA it is very starkly in difference from the frequency of the lifeline that I'm in right now, and the lifeline that I would like to manifest, then the time delay is longer. I need to work with that attitude. I need to stick with that attitude for long enough. So to give you a concrete example of this, I remember reading Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich and creating that mantra where I was like, I'm so happy and grateful that by January 1st, 2019, I have $100,000 in the bank account. And back then I was a college kid with maybe $3,000 in my bank account. I started reading that in 2017 and nothing happened in two years, but I still kept on reading it. By December of 2019, not January 2019, December 2019 or January 2020, I had exactly $100,000 in my bank account. It took time for that attitude to be reflected. In another case, I wanted to make 20K a month in my business. I wanted to make 20K a month in income so that I could have financial freedom and not go to a nine to five job. I visualized that 20K a month every morning and every night before bed for almost a year and a half before it came to fruition. And it was very, very far away from my current lifeline at the time because my current lifeline when I was visualizing that outcome was college kid studying to do his uh, finals for his junior year and I had no clue how I would be making 20K a month. I just set that goal and I was like, this is a fancy dream and it would make all my dreams come true if I were to ever manifest this. 
And so I just worked with it, visualized it every single morning and every single night. Then I got the idea. I was called divinely, if you will, given a revelation to start a YouTube channel. And so I followed that impulse, that intuition, if you will. And I started the YouTube channel and just took the steps. And then I had the idea of starting up a coaching business. And then that coaching business led me to 20K a month. And that's the beauty of this. If you maintain that attitude for long enough, reality will literally create bridges between lifelines to lead you to it. And those were the bridges. I had different bridges that led me from this lifeline to that lifeline, from my current lifeline of being broke and only having 3,000 in my bank account to having $100,000 in my bank account, you know, making 20K a month because I kept that attitude and I worked with it for long enough. It's dependent on the complexity. It was somewhat complex. Now, if I want to become a billionaire, it'll take a little bit longer. It's still possible, anything is possible, but it will take longer because that's not currently within the confines of my comfort zone yet. Now that you understand one of the most important principles of the mirror, let's get to the final principle of the mirror that I think is equally as important, if not more. The reflection is shaped in the unity of heart and mind. What do I mean by that? It's kind of going along the lines of principle number two, but what pops up here is a concept called intention, inner versus outer intention. Before we get to that, what I want you to realize is the reflection that you're presenting, the clarity of that reflection is dependent on how united your heart and mind are, how united your thought and feeling are. For example, a lot of people want to grow a business and make money and have financial freedom, but Within them, they come from a place of fear, lack, doubt, and scarcity. I want to make money because I want to get away from my job. I want to make more money because I hate the bills. You see that? Their hearts are stuck to what they don't want while their mind kind of intellectually focuses on what they do want and vice versa. They think about what they don't want and they feel about what they do want. So this incongruence is what moves them one step forward one step back. This is what happens to 99% of people. Oh, I want this because I don't want to be stuck here. But they can't get away from, I don't want to be stuck here. I don't want to be stuck here. Remember, the mirror reflects the purified content of your attitude. If you feel strongly about avoiding being stuck, then stuck is what you'll get. If you look in the mirror, you set a goal to lose weight and you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, I'm still so fat, okay. There you go. You're still overweight. You're still not the weight that you want to be. You still look the way that you want to look. So the key here is unite your heart and mind, unite your thought and feeling to present a clear image to the mirror. You don't have any room in there for doubt. There's no room in there for fear. There's no room in there for anything that will deviate you from the goal, anything that will present a blurry image to the mirror. We present a clear image to the mirror. We hold it for long enough reality will have no choice but to reflect it. The other thing that this brings me to is the concept of inner versus outer intention. You know that the reflection is formed by the image. What would happen if I tried to manipulate the mirror by moving it? Because I don't like the reflection, I tried to shatter the mirror into a million pieces or I tried to rotate the mirror to manipulate it. That's me doing it by force and not doing it by power. There's this great principle called power versus force. It was a book written by David R. Hawkins who says that anything conducted by force is a win-lose situation. It will come back to karmically bite you in the butt. Anything that is conducted from a place of power is a win-win and it will lead to long-term fulfillment and just the greater good of humanity in general. So it's best to come from a place of power because a place of force will come back to haunt you anyways. With that kept in mind, there's two types of intention that we all possess. Inner intention, my personal intention, is to force and manipulate the world. When I try to take physical action to try and change the chess pieces in this moment, I'm only working on this moment, I'm trying to manipulate the mirror. When I work with outer intention, the intention that both belongs to us, but also does not belong to us at the same time, the godly, the worldly intention, when I tap into just a tiny sliver of outer intention, you can move mountains. And the greatest messiahs and avatars had an abundance of access to outer intention. For mankind right now, due to our consciousness level, it has started to slowly decay, but we still have it available for us. And it's mostly available when we focus on win-win situations. We follow our heart's core path. Outer intention is the realm of the heart. Inner intention is the realm of the mind. When we unite inner and outer intention together, we get the most use out of outer intention. Okay, I'm going to explain that in a second, but for now, all you need to know, when we try to manipulate the mirror, we're trying to force things to happen. We try to take massive action in spite of our beliefs right? If you believe you're not worthy and you can't achieve what you want, you can try to 
force your way into doing something, but your patterns, your beliefs will always make you fall back. So imagine this, imagine being in a mail room and you don't know if your package is there. You just don't know. And you're like, oh, it's probably not here, but you look for it. You half heartedly look for it because you don't really believe the package is there. But on the other hand, let's say you're about to exit the mail room and you get a notification that the package definitely has been delivered. You know that the package is in there. Now your search takes on a whole new level of conviction and therefore you find it. So it's your attitude that allows you to take more effective action. Your outer intention in conjunction with inner intention is what makes the goal manifest. But most people they act with inner intention and they just try to take massive action forcefully like my client William was. You know he was trying to ram through that toxic pattern that he had but when he realized that hey I need to get out of my own way so my action is actually effective and I'm not fighting against an invisible force. Do you feel like you're fighting against an invisible force every single day? You kind of move two steps forward, two steps back? This is why. So when I share with you this protocol for the mirror, I promise you it's gonna completely change your life. But again, with everything, the greatest things in life, you need to commit to it. So the very first part to implementing the protocol is understanding the mirror cycle. Okay, so this is how the mirror cycle works. Initially, for most people, why they keep staying stuck in an undesired situation, this is where they begin. They look at their outer reality and they begin with what's in my environment right now. Oh, I went through all of these traumatic events in the past. I su never succeeded in any of the businesses that I tried to start. So they begin here. This is their number one. And then they use the reflection to form their new attitude. They say, oh, okay, I'm the kind of person who's a failure. I suck, I'm a loser, I never get what I want. And when they form that attitude, the mirror has no choice but to reflect and say, oh, you think you suck? Okay, here you go, you suck. And then the mirror reflects, and then they observe that reflection again, form that same attitude, mirror reflects, they compound this, to the power of infinity and they get to the end of their lives and they're like, wow, I never achieved anything worthwhile. I never did what I wanted to do. This was a wasted life. I sure hope that doesn't happen to you. And it won't if you flip it to the mirror cycle of the creator. So the mirror cycle of the creator is the following. You actually begin here. This is your number one. You completely ignore what's happened in the past. So in one of the past videos, I was talking about one of my clients who is a Canadian playwright. They mentioned to me how when a setback occurs, they've had many incidents where they get to the last, the final stretch, and then something happens. The actor gets sick or the director wants to quit and then they can never move forward with their play. And so they're like, oh, okay, well, this is just how it is. This is just how I've been, this is just how I am. They observe the reflection of their current reality and how things have been up until this point. We say, from this moment forward that you're watching this video, we say, I'm putting a period here. I'm starting a new sentence, okay? You're starting a new paragraph. Anything that's happened in the past doesn't matter anymore. Unless it's positive, doesn't matter. We start from this moment on onwards and we pick our new attitude. We begin with a new attitude of, I am a successful playwright. I am a successful business owner. Good things happen to me. Everything that happened in the past is an anomaly because I wasn't conscious. I didn't consciously create it. From this moment, I am conscious. Mirror will slowly start to reflect it. It's gonna take some time for the full reflection, but mirror will slowly start to reflect it. So this becomes number two. This is the cycle of the creator, which then, leads you to number three. You observe the reflection, only the good reflections. You look for the confirmation of anything positive and you ignore all else that doesn't serve it. Have you ever noticed how the greatest minds in the world, are, they're incredibly biased. They are in their own world. If you read Elon Musk's biography, his ex-wife Justine says it's Elon's world and we're all living in it. His sense of reality is so strong. His attitude is so strong. Reality reflects it. Now, you might not want to live a stressful life like Elon or any of these other elites. You might just want a sliver of freedom, but this is how you do it. So you begin here, you form the attitude, mirror will inevitably reflect. You're going to see tiniest bits of reflection. I mean, even when I started off and I started a YouTube channel, I had a goal of, you know, I want to get to 100,000 subscribers and I want to change lives. But then when I made my first video, second video, crickets, 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 crickets. I can always look at the glass is half empty. Oh no, it's not happening. I'm not moving forward in the business. YouTube channel's not happening. Might as well quit and go back to a job. Or I can say, hey, look, I actually did get 100 views. I got 50 views. This comment that someone said it helped them positively. I only look for what I want to look for, what I want to find. If I look at criticism, it's only to improve and get better. Mirror reflects, observe reflection, use the reflection to strengthen your new attitude. Just think about something that you want to improve in your life right now. Write an attitude statement. Something like, I am the kind of person, might want to write in the third person, it's the kind of person that attracts $20,000 a month or however much money you want to make. Find a confirmation of it. Consciously look for a confirmation that leads even one step forward. And by the way, this is ridiculous. 
right? Because I'm saying, hey, look, I want to view myself. I've always viewed myself as ugly. I want to view myself as attractive to the opposite sex. So quasi is extremely attractive. New attitude statement, reflection, confirmation that I notice in my reality is, oh, Starbucks line, girl looks at me for three seconds longer than usual. In the past, I would have said, she's looking at me longer than usual because I'm ugly and she's never seen someone as hideous as me before. But now in this new reality, I say, oh, she's looking at me because she probably thinks I'm really attractive. Maybe you don't believe it. Just say it to yourself. Because if you say it to yourself enough, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna start to believe it. Like the music you listen to, the songs you listen to, the news you listen to, the people you listen to around you. Keep saying it to yourself enough, you're gonna start to believe it. This is the first step of the mirror principle protocol, which is incredibly important. The next step is to master the image. I like to call this image mastery. In order to master the image that you're presenting to the mirror, you must focus on what you want and what you have. What do I mean by that? What do most people do when they set a goal? I wanna have a business that's bringing me enough money to retire and spend time with my family. You know, that's twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month. I wanna do that, start a business. Oh no, but I don't know so much. I don't know how I'm gonna get there. What if it doesn't work? Oh no, so many steps. I don't know where to go. What do you know? What do you have? Focus on that. Stop focusing on the unknown, what you don't know, and what you don't have, focus on what you do know and what you do have. I have to continually remind myself to do this, by the way. Every morning, I write down three things that I'm grateful for, three things that I'm experiencing in my life right now that I'm grateful for. I'm alive and healthy. I have a beautiful family, a beautiful home. I have a thriving business. There's a million things going wrong. I'm gonna focus on my three things that I'm grateful for to start my day to form my attitude because the more you focus on things that you're grateful for, the more of it you'll get. The mirror reflects the purified contents of your attitude. So focus on what you want and what you already have. Shift your attention away from what you don't know and what you don't have. A very clear example of this I'm gonna give you is when I started my business, I had no clue what I wanted to do. I tried trading, I tried to get into drop shipping, thought I was gonna sell merch, didn't know. What do I know? You know, I have this intuition to start a YouTube channel. I have no clue how I'm gonna monetize it. I can't see clearly, just act. Act on what you do know. Just take this one step. I took steps to start trading. It didn't work for me. I took steps to start drop shipping. It didn't work for me. But I had to take those steps. I had to do what I thought is right. You have to try things. Knock on many different doors to find the one door that does make sense. I made a YouTube channel, started to make YouTube videos for a whole year before I even monetized it, before I even started pitching my services. Now, you might be wondering, Quasi, what do I do when things don't go my way and I have setbacks? Remember what the crucial part is to mastering the image. The crucial part to mastering the image is my attitude. The attitude that I'm presenting to this mirror of reality. Therefore, if you are encountering a setback, you're trying to make 20K a month, first month you make 10K or 2K or 1K, next month you make a little bit more, but then the following month you go back down, you're like, oh no, everything's crash and burn. No, this is just a blessing in disguise. There's a lesson to be learned in here. So now I've taken the negative and I've turned it into a positive. I don't know what the lesson is. I don't know. Maybe God is protecting me from something. I really wanted this event to happen or I wanted to show up on time for that thing, but then I could in, but somehow there's a blessing here. There's a blessing in disguise. That's how you have to view it. Blessing in disguise. Keep your attitude intact. Never let the reflection affect your image. That's what the sheep do. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I just, I had to say it. Like, that's what most people who follow, like a bunch of zombies and sheep, listen to other people, yes men, that's what they do. You want to walk your own path. You have to have the courage to look at the reflection and say, not for me, just temporary. This reflection are thoughts, feelings, attitudes from the past that are manifesting right now. It doesn't determine what the future will be. It's easier said than done, of course. The greatest things in life are easier said than done. That's why most people never do it. That's why most people never succeed because not many are willing to walk the walk. Finally, this brings me to one key piece that most never understand, intention mastery. Remember we talked about inner intention versus outer intention and how to use it together. What you have to understand is there are different lifelines, the complexity of the goal, the, the time delay is dependent on the complexity of the goal. So if my goal is really far away, I need intention, outer intention to shift along lifelines. Outer intention creates the bridge between different lifelines. Inner intention causes movement along lifelines. Outer intention causes shift between parallel lifelines. There's a lifeline in which you are wealthy. There's a lifeline in which you are going through a natural disaster and the economy is collapsing, there's a lifeline in which you're dead. You don't even live in this dimension. So the use of heart and mind, conjunction of heart and mind, 
focus on the goal itself will cause you to shift along lifelines. The taking of action, inner intention, will allow you to move along lifelines. It's kind of like switching train tracks. Outer intention is switching train tracks, inner intention is the movement of the locomotive. It takes effort, work, energy to move the locomotive, but both are needed. You can manifest the Ferrari in your driveway, but if you don't go and drive it, then the image isn't complete. Right? So you still need to put one foot in front of the other and go and get it and claim it. So the best way to do that is to align your thoughts, aka attitudes, your words that you speak, and actions. Alignment of thoughts, words, and actions allows you to stay congruent to what you want and align outer and inner intention. Most people think one thing, they say something else, and they take another different action completely. One day they think, oh, I, I want to be a millionaire. And the next day they're like, okay, but I have nothing in my bank account. I don't think I'm going to be a millionaire. And then they go back to their jobs and they don't try. So it's incongruent. Think you want to be a millionaire and you think like a millionaire, speak like one. Don't complain about little bills and little things that happen. Don't act all petty when you lose a little bit of money. What would a millionaire do? How would a millionaire speak? How would a millionaire act? If you do want that thing in your life, think like it, speak like it, act like it. Have the courage to act like it now, in this moment, to the best of your ability. You might be saying, oh, but Quasi, a millionaire will get a yacht and then go on the yacht and, and, and then party on the yacht. Great, you don't have a yacht right now. How can you be a millionaire, act like a millionaire, with what you do have? Well, let's first start by eliminating all the victim talk. The key to the mirror principle is consistent application. Look at our client Shams. He went from making 4K a month to 33K a month, dropped 42 pounds, and feels more certain and assured of himself than ever before. When I asked him, what did you attribute this to? He says, the mirror principle. Our other client, Miriam, making over 20K in two weeks, she was able to buy her own house and completely feels different than ever before. The, the delay of the principle, the mirror principle is real. All of these clients took some time to get results. This was an overnight results. Where most fail is they fail to keep a consistent image and they don't present a consistent image to the mirror because this mir mirror image that they're presenting is constantly getting affected by the reflection that they're seeing right now or the problems that they're going through right now. So what I'd like for you to do right now is to create a thread beneath this video, kickstarting your 90 day protocol in the format that I'm gonna show you on the screen. So go ahead and do that and each day update with a comment on the thread. So do three wins and you write down your three wins of the day and you write down your three big takeaways from applying this. To your day. The last time I actually did this with the uh, visualization video and over 400,000 people participated and changed their lives. I want you to be one of them. Uh, I don't know how many people are going to be able to view this video. That's by the grace of the YouTube algorithm, the algorithm gods. But if you can share this with a friend, that will be phenomenal too. If you'd like to work closer together with me and my team this year to take your life to the absolute next level, then I invite you to apply to work with us. Full transparency, we get over a thousand applications every single month and we can only enroll 25 clients. That's roughly a 2.5% acceptance rate, which I believe is lower than Harvard. The reason why we do this is because we're looking for best fit clients because the better the fit, the better the results. I'm going to be completely transparent. We don't have a 100% success rate. I don't think any program in the world or anything in the world has a 100% success rate, but we damn sure like to keep it as close to 100% as possible. And that's why we want to ensure the best fits. Okay, so here are two types of clients that we're looking for. Number one, corporate employee who is an aspiring entrepreneur. You hate your full time job and you kind of want to transition out to entrepreneurship. But what you find is you're unclear about the next step. You're always trying different business opportunities, funnels and marketing tactics, but nothing really sticks. What you're lacking is intellectual, emotional and identity level clarity on who you must become to fully pursue it with full commitment. Okay. The second type of client we're looking for is the existing entrepreneur. You're making a certain amount of money in your business already. You might be a trader, a real estate agent. You're basically at work for yourself. You might have an online business and you make a certain amount of money one month, but then the next month you go down and what you're noticing is this inconsistency is coming from your internal inconsistency because you feel one way one month and another way another month. You start to doubt yourself, your decisions, and you can't really commit to it. So your revenue is also going through a roller coaster, kind of like Williams was. So if this sounds like you and you've tried all the different methods and you finally want to end this and actually get permanent, real, lasting results like all of the clients that I mentioned, I invite you to apply here. Just click right here to fill up a short application to work with us and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your application. Thanks.